What's going on guys and welcome back to a brand new series. Yes, it's a new series. This is Web Dev Journey and in today's video I want to talk about the intro for the new series which is web performance. Now, for me web performance, you know, it's a very very big topic. It it really is. You, you can't get this in a series. I'm not going to talk about everything that goes into web performance because it's just too much and frankly to be honest, I don't know everything about web performance. I just know the key things that I do to make it better and the things that my mentor in my last company taught me and everyone else that taught me things you know what they taught me what they taught me about web performance so that's what I want to talk about the about in this video now the reason why I chose this topic was because in the company that I work for they gave me a task of like figuring out why their web web performance sucks and since I was new new to that company I didn't know too much about their tech stack or what um, you know services are using for things as in like image caching CDN all these things I didn't know any of those services yet so I had to basically huddle up the team and when I say huddle up I mean you know call them video calling teams that's it you know they didn't have to have their cameras on I didn't care but anyways I asked the team what are we doing to make our web performance so garbage and it occurred to me and that in that meeting that most of my team don't know like what is it that makes web performance you know good like what can they do to make web performance good uh, you know they probably knew the basics as in like uh, you know image resizing and some of them didn't even know that to be honest you know CSS minif minification JS actually file minification right minifying all files possible or compressing them you know making making a uh, the website load things relevant to what the you know the user requested and then uh, loading all the crappy other things that they they don't really care about probably you know later on but things like that and they didn't know how to some of them most of them actually didn't know know any of that and i was like man this would be a great you know youtube series i guess so uh, this is why i'm doing it because i actually had a real life situation where you know people didn't understand web performance and I want you guys to understand web performance. Uh, <clears throat> so let's talk about you know web performance. And by the way, guys, don't assume that everybody has good connection, internet connection. Don't assume that everybody's running 4G, 5G. You know, uh, everybody has great resources on a computer. Oh man, he has the you know top of the line CPU, memory. You know. Uh, so don't don't assume all that you you have to assume the worst that they're running you know garbage spotty 2G you know network with limited bandwidth they probably they're probably running the internet or they're try, they're probably visiting your website through a smart TV which is we all know isn't really the greatest and also you know probably handheld devices or they're probably on a low power or old low uh, power feature phones you know stuff like that man just old outdated technology that they're trying to get to your website like you gotta you gotta you gotta think about that just don't think the oh they got the good internet you know so that's one thing anyways because <laughs> everybody in my and they they just assumed like they didn't like it kind of shocked me i'm like why aren't you thinking that they don't have 2g like they're working out with 2g right anyways anyways so anyways, that's what I want to talk about. And basically, I want to talk about four categories in this intro video, which is going, well, I'm not going to tell you right now. But anyways, I want to talk about four categories. And this MDM web docs, everybody should know what MDM is. And MDN, <clears throat> they have a, actually a documentation on web performance, as you can see. And it's very, very long. And I don't, <laughs> if you want to, there's going to be a URL link down in the description if you want to go over it, read it. But I'm going to talk about four categories and these four, you could put any of these under these four categories, I think. I'm pretty sure you can. But anyways, let's talk about them, right? So the first category is reducing overall load time. Now, this could be done by, you know, compressing and minifying all files, reducing the number of, you know, HTTP requests sent back and forth between the server and the client. You know, also, you know, doing or employing advanced loading and caching techniques and conditionally serving the user with only what they need when they actually need it. You know, these are some things that we could talk about in this series. You know, the second category is making the site usable as soon as possible. 
you know, this is done by, you know, loading critical components first to give the user initial content and functionality, and then, you know, deferring less important features for later on using lazy loading to re we all heard about lazy loading, right? But basically you use this to request and display content only when the user gets to or interacts with it. And this is basically done with, you know, images, but there could be more other things that you could do with this. You can also do like preloading features. The user is likely to interact with next. So uh, things like that. This is what we could put under the second category, which is making the site usable as soon as possible. Now, the third category would be smoothness and interactivity. Basically, this is just like uh, about improving the perceived performance of the site through skeleton interfaces. And what I mean about that is basically, you know, visual lo loaders making clear indication that something is happening and things are going to to work soon so when somebody and a prime example of this is like feedback i guess so if someone submits a comment you want to tell them hey we received your comment thank you so much you know or something like that or uh you know there was something wrong with the comment um we will get this working out soon right just giving them notification that everything's going to be fine um something like that right it's just i guess the uh the UI and the UX part of it. And the fourth performance or the fourth category is performance measurement. Now this is, you could do this with a lot of tools and metrics, but <clears throat> to be quite honest, the best, the best way to, for improving and optimizing the performance of a website, it just depends on a wide variety of factors. So the best approach is Basically, check off as many boxes as you can with reasonable limits, right? Don't don't just go like go into MDM right here and be like, okay, these are all the boxes that we need to check off. No, man. Like, if you can't do certain things for some reason, don't do it, right? Just try to check off as many boxes as you can, you know. Like I said, with reasonable limits. It's not a uh, do everything or your website is garbage scenario. It's rather a do what you can. And not everything will fit, so you're okay <laughs> scenario. But anyways, yeah, those are the basically the four categories that I want to talk to you about. Obviously, we're going to be talking about, you know, um, optimizing images, web fonts, uh, CDNs, caching, markup and content, things like that. We, we are going to be talking about that, those type of things in this in this uh, series. But I want to hear from you guys if this is a good series or not to talk about. I honestly do think this is a good series. There's not going to be a lot of coding. There's, there, I'm going to show you how to do things, uh, but not that much coding because there's going to be, you know, you could do this a variety of ways. There, there's so many ways that you could do these things. But let me know down in the comments if you think this is a good idea or not, and we'll, not, we'll go from there. But thank you guys for watching my video. I really do appreciate, you know, you spending your time watching my video. It means a lot to me. So thank you guys, and I will see you in the next video. Hopefully, uh, you know, next video being one of these series or within the series or just another intro of another series if this doesn't go well. <laughs> so thank you guys, and yeah, bye.